TOK essay title six, May, 2024. This one's so easy and I've been getting so many requests to do this. Let's figure this title out. I got research and evidence for you. Let's get an A in TOK. Get an A in TOK. I've got so much free stuff to give you. This video is free. If you haven't yet, check out the description. I'm gonna let you download the notes, the actual document that I'm taking you through. I've got all of these links in here. So before you watch the rest of this video, go ahead and download the um, document in my description. Completely free. I just give you a link. You can download it. But if you want some extra help, I got a lot of stuff for you. First of all, go to getanantok.com slash free stuff. I've got organizers there, examples. I'll really help you out. Secondly, if you want to send me your essay, if you want to Zoom with me every week, we can I can hook you up. Go to fiverr.com slash Jones. That's me. You can go to bit.ly slash TOK Tutoring. You can send me your essays. I will help you out. Somebody just ordered a premium package. They're sending me three of their essays back to back to back. I'm going to help them out with that. And then finally, if you need a lot of help, and if you're watching this video, you probably do, you can get TOK Masterclass, the internet's only on-demand TOK course with all of my research, I give it to you. It's all there. You probably need it for this one or not because this one's actually really easy. So let's take a look at it. So here is my document that I'm giving you for free. You can get on my free download packet there. You can check out my online store right there to get in touch with me. But let's take a look at the title here. I love this one. This one's good. And it's very different slash similar from um, title number three. Are we too quick? That's important to assume that the most recent evidence is inevitably the strongest. Discuss with reference to the natural sciences and one other area of knowledge. So I am going to suggest that you do either um, uh, human sciences or history here. We'll talk about that for a little bit, but, um, or you can skip ahead and look at it now. Check out the chapters at the bottom. But I don't really suggest math or arts here. You could probably do math, but I think that the reasoning behind it is going to be pretty similar to natural sciences and human sciences. But in human sciences and history, there's a couple of really cool things to use that I think are going to be um, just awesome. So I really suggest human sciences with this. Okay. My thoughts on the title. So this could be another yes, no title. So if you look at the title here, um, are we? Yes, we are or no, we're not, and that's really all it is. So avoid something that simple. Instead, if you say yes, or if you say no, what you want to then is elaborate and go why the recency appears so strong. So why is it that we um, quickly or we don't quickly assume that um, evidence is strong when it's new? Um, or you can talk about what happens when we do or what happens when we don't. So when we don't, here are the benefits. When we do, here are the benefits. One of the things that we'll talk about in just a minute in the organization section is you could talk about um, the benefits of assuming that it's, too, that, that it's the strongest or the benefits of not assuming that it's the strongest. So you wanna think beyond, yes, we are too quick. No, we are not too quick. You can talk about the nature of strong evidence. So you can use this title as a way of exploring when it comes to any kind of evidence, what makes it strong? That's a really cool one. And then how should we approach new evidence? This is really something that I suggest that you do in the conclusion, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, now if you watch my total um, title breakdown that I posted first, and if you haven't yet watched them all, um, spoiler alert, I say you shouldn't do title number two and you shouldn't do title number five. I may not even make a video about title number five. I just, I just don't wanna do it. Um, but I said something really important. You can be very liberal in how you interpret the word we. So nearly any situation that we're gonna look at will demonstrate some kind of person assuming that recent evidence is strongest. So to use a variety of perspectives, which is what all top scores do, interpret the we differently. So in some instances, the we could be experts drawing conclusions saying this is strongest. But in another example, it could be you. Remember, personal examples can work really well. So don't feel like you only have to talk about a huge group of scientists and then, um, you know, or only you. We can be any kind of group of people. Now, some students, and this is really important, and a lot of your teachers make you do this, and I don't know why, um, are going to really explore and define terms in this title, in the introduction, total waste for this. You don't wanna talk about inevitably because the title is creating, is creating a hypothetical or potentially hypothetical situation in which people assume that the new evidence is inevitably, and, and, and the, is inevitably the strongest. So you wanna break down the whole situation, not one word. So all we're saying is, are we this? Now we could say that it is not inevitably, okay? And then the answer would be 
No. So take the whole phrase there and really analyze that phrase, not one word. Okay, next, focusing on, on a phrase now, too quick should be taken as a bad thing, okay? So if we are too quick, then we shouldn't have been too quick. So there was some sort of negative situation that occurred. We were too quick and we were wrong. We were too quick and people die. We were too quick and um, the evidence was later proven to be false. That's why it says too quick as opposed to are we quick, okay? So I'll just make sure that you do that. And then finally, a lot of evidence um, for this video and, and for this um, a document that I'm giving you is similar to stuff that I talked about for title number three. So if you see my video on that, you'll notice some repetition. I tweaked it and changed it, but the, the core evidence is going to be the same. So let's scroll down to organizing the essay. This is what honestly 80% of students globally are going to do. And remember, if you choose this title, this and number three are the two easiest. Most students are going to choose these. I would say over half of the, of the DP students will choose one of these two titles. And of those, the vast majority are going to do this. Yes, we are too quick to assume, two examples, then no, we are not too quick to assume, um, and then two examples. And it works, it's fine, it's just, it's just boring. But here's the issue, and I really wanna draw attention to this because I think that this can really help you send out. So the issue with a no perspective is that there are millions of examples in which we have been quick to assume that new evidence is the strongest. So if we have, if you say no, and there's one time when the answer is yes, then, then your whole argument um, really falls apart. So a thoughtful answer will discuss the significance of assumptions, the nature of evidence, and why we are convinced by evidence. So remember, this title is so easy, so you get an opportunity to go above and beyond. Evaluate, discuss the implications of what we're talking about. So here's an, a, an example of organization. I came up with this and I'm like, man, this works really, really well. Should I not share? No, of course I'm gonna share it with you, okay? So one example, you can organize it by the types of evidence. So your first example is about empirical evidence and your second is about theoretical evidence. And then you use uh, natural sciences and your second A-OK. -okay. Natural sciences and your second A-OK. -okay. So then um, in this example, I'm just pulling things off the top of my head. What happened? People did not assume that it was the strongest too quickly. And then what happened? And then with your second A-OK, -okay, people did assume that it was the strongest too quickly. So there you've got your countering perspectives, but you're not just going in a yes, no, yes, no. You're coming up with something that's a little bit more unique and interesting. And then we would do the same thing for theoretical. So people didn't assume it was the strongest because it was rejected by experts. You see how we're getting a little bit more specific here? And then with the AOK2, -OK I think I was thinking, um, yeah, math here. People assumed it was strongest because it helped solve a problem. So instead of organizing it by yes and no, we're organizing it by evidence type. Here's another one, version three, true and false. So what if we focus on the evidence was false? So in the natural sciences, if we had a false piece of evidence, people assumed too quickly that it was the strongest. And then the opposite, people didn't assume too quickly that it was the strongest. And then we're gonna talk about why. Because the evidence was blank. Or why? Because the people were fill in the blank. And then this one, the evidence was good. So people didn't believe it, though it was true. And people believed it quickly, but why? So as you can see here, there is so much room for finding a new perspective that is not yes because and no because. So if you're really shooting for the top score, Take one of these organizations. Um, if you're shooting for an A or a B, this will probably not get you there, okay? Um, now, with that said, if you're shooting for an A or a B, um, a four-point TOK essay is the global standard. And by standard, I really mean the bare minimum, despite my encouragement. Otherwise, if you see my other essays, essay videos, I'm always saying, do more, do more, add comparison. And nobody ever does. Even the people who, who um, get connected with me on Fiverr, um, they send me these essays, it's all six paragraphs, okay? So if you wanna stand out, go beyond introduction, four body paragraphs, and the conclusion, okay? That's my, not my number one, that's my number two or three piece of advice when I tutor people on Fiverr. So if you wanna send me your essay, fiverr.com slash patfreakinjones, bit.ly slash TOK tutoring, I will help you out so much. I won't write it for you, but I'll, I'll help you, okay? But get started with this. This one's so good. I think, honestly, this one's my favorite, but this one's really good too. 
Okay, let's look at natural science, evidence, and example. So a couple things to avoid, and I've said this multiple times, um, avoid Galileo and the Catholic Church for two reasons. First of all, you're going to sound like an angsty teenager and no one wants to read that. Secondly, it's so common, so overused, and you don't require any research to pull it off. It totally works, but it's just you don't want to equate yourself with other students who are not actually researching, okay? And then secondly, I would say avoid anything COVID vaccine related and recent. It's just not worth it again, because that's the lowest form of example, because people are just going, oh yeah, my crazy aunt in Texas did this. So just don't, don't do it. Okay. So some examples now, I use this example a lot, DNA and sexism. So I talk a lot about Barbara McClintock. I got this really cool video right here um, from SciShow, shout out to SciShow, SciShow. So yeah, he's gonna tell you about Barbara McClintock. Cool, thanks buddy. And um, she presented evidence and it was recent evidence, but it was not considered to be strongest because no one listened to her because she was a woman. So in this case, they did not assume that her, that her new evidence was the strongest. And the reason why is that um, she was a woman. So we're gonna answer this, no, we are not too quick because people are stupid, people are sexist, and you can go beyond that. Um, with that said, if you don't wanna use Barbara McClintock because, spoiler alert, like this video is gonna get 10,000 views, um, if you don't want to use Barbara McClintock, you can look for other scientists that were ignored um, for their for their gender or for their nationality, which is this one. This is from my video three as well. Um, German Alfred Wegener was ignored when he tried to explain why South America and Africa might fit together. So he invented, um, you know, the uh, he didn't invent continental drift. He he proposed it and had good evidence, but he was ignored for many reasons. So I've got this really great article here. Um, this talking about Wegener and why he was ignored. And there's actually multiple reasons why he was ignored. One of them was the whole idea of continental drift. It is pretty crazy if you've never learned about it before. And then secondly, um, he was German. So he was ignored because of that. Okay, another one is Einstein was wrong. So um, I got a cool article here. This is actually, yeah, this is Salon. So this is kind of an entertaining article. Um, so when Einstein published a paper describing the nature of light, he was widely rejected by his contemporaries. His findings were too radical. So why, really actually, sim similar to Wegener here, when you come up with something that is groundbreaking, people will not jump to say that your evidence is, um, your, your new evidence, your recent evidence is the strongest because really they just don't understand it. So um, then also check out this article about things we learned in school that were most likely false. Uh, this is really, really cool. Um, Dinosaurs having feathers. That kind of just looks like it's a mohawk. That, that's weird. That's cool. So there's just a whole bunch of things here that, that will help you think about evidence that's new, evidence that's old. And then really the direction that I'm going to suggest you go is what makes evidence persuasive in the first place. That's really, I think that's actually a um, TOK ex exhibition title. Okay, let's move on to human science as evidence and examples. So the first one, evidence in law. This is the reason why I would choose human sciences. I love this. It's not like, it's not like evidence in law. It's like evidence in law. So find an instance, there are millions in which new evidence so uh, was brought to light far after a trial happened. So this could be a new witness, a new evidence, piece of evidence, like a physical object, or most likely a new technology. So, so many people have been able to um, prove that they were innocent or guilty by using DNA as the newest piece of evidence. So I'm not giving you an example here because you can find one in about three seconds. But think about when new evidence was brought into court and we assume that it was the strongest. Um, is that good? Is it bad? Was the evidence deservedly strong? Or did we just say, oh, it's new. I'm going to believe it. Um, with DNA, you, you, you know we should be believing it. So that's an example of when the most recent evidence really should be believed. Okay, improving on knowledge. I really like this one because I read so many essays on Fiverr about, um, and again, hit me up there if you need help, about, you know, you think you're smart because you can mention supply, supply side economics and um, Keynesian economics. And, you know, it's not that interesting because it just says that you went to your first two days of econ, right? So what I want to encourage you to think about is um, economic theories that are believed, but when people are trying to improve them, when they say we have new evidence that builds on this pre-existing knowledge. So here's a speech by a Secretary Yellen. She was the, the Secretary of the Federal Reserve Bank talking about modern 
supply side economics. So they are saying we have this new evidence that improves the old theory. So again, if you're just talking about supply and demand in the TOK essay, that's so basic. You got to go further than that. So she says she gives credit to Joe Biden. And you can think about many different kinds of um, theories that have been improved, I put that in quotes specifically, by new knowledge and evidence. Do we accept it too, too quickly or do we not? Uh, you can think in, in here, um, why do we accept it? Is it working? And we're saying, oh, this is true because it's working? Or are we saying this is a theory, now we need to see if it works? So there's two different ways to approach that knowledge there. Okay, I struggled to come up with another example that I really like this one. So think about calling elections. Research on how different organizations, governments, and media outlets call an election. I've got two articles here explaining how elections are called. Uh, Nate Silver, who is the most, um, he's the most famous political statistician. He has this huge article about when he completely blew it by um, not predicting Donald Trump would be elected. So Nate Silver wrote this article and it's really long. Um, and a lot of people were like, Nate Silver, you're so smart. You predicted Obama's election uh, with 100% accuracy. How'd you blow it on Trump? This is how, and he's discussing new evidence. So I would really read that. Okay, last, we've got history. So I talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls a lot because they are um, super controversial. They're very recent, but they're also very groundbreaking. So I've got two different articles here. This one is by University of Notre Dame, which quickly assumes that the, that, that the new evidence is the strongest. So they say the Dead Sea Scrolls, they changed this one word. Therefore, the word that we've always believed must be um wrong. The new scroll is correct. But this article says that some of the differences may teach us different things. So when we get new texts based on things that are older, how does that interact? But with that said, where things get weird, you're going to have to pay attention here. These new scrolls are actually the oldest. So that's how we can get kind of weird here because these scrolls are 2000 years old. Okay, I love this one. This one's really recent and recent things can be good. If you've been following the news, there's been this weird trial um, in Mexico about aliens. And of course he looks just like E.T. I don't know if this is history, if this is sciences. You can probably throw this out in multiple ways, but it's a congressional hearing where this guy is coming in and talking about aliens. So he's got new evidence and the government's giving him a platform. It's crazy. So how does this explore the idea of what is persuasive and what makes good evidence, evidence that we jump on quickly and believe or that we don't? And then why do we do it? Okay, my last piece of evidence before we get to the conclusion is um, new discoveries in history. So the, the title is easy because of articles like this. I, it took me 10 seconds to find this and it's just this huge list of the world's most recent ar archaeological discoveries. And what's really interesting as I went through all of these is there's really no controversy because we're saying because this is old um, and we have found it recently, we basically believe everything we're saying. I looked at one. Um, okay, yeah, so the example on Notre Dame, um, they found some sarcophaguses here. And I would say the reason that they believe that these soft sarcophag sarcophagi are, um, are authentic is because they existed before we did. So there wasn't any, when any way that the evidence would have been tampered with. So the idea that it was sealed and they only discovered these tombs because of the fire says we can believe it. We're not too quick to assume that it's the strongest, but we can assume that it's the strongest because there was no way for the evidence to be tampered with. So that's one example why too quick is probably not a thing because there are many reasons why we can uh, with reliability and justification, jump into the assumption that new evidence is the strongest. So with the conclusion, I got a lot of stuff I want to say here, including something that I say to nearly everybody who pays me to talk to them on Fiverr. Um, in your conclusion, return to the phrase too quick and talk about whether or not we are too quick or not. Redundant, delete, but keep going. You should have already said this in your thesis. So in your thesis, say whether or not we are too we are too quick. And in your first sentence, say, we are too quick. And then we're going to go, but, or we're not too quick. So use the conclusion to discuss the nature of evidence and what makes it strong. If a piece of evidence is very strong, is there such thing as believing it too quickly? So if we go back to this very clear example of we have these tombs, we know who they are, they haven't been tampered with, 
um, is there a way to assume that this evidence is strong too quickly? Is it too quick? I don't think too quickly applies here. Um, we should be accepting this very quickly because we have reason to believe that it's reliable. You can also discuss the nature of strong evidence in the first place. What has to happen for evidence to be trustworthy so that we aren't making hasty assumptions? And by hasty, I mean uh, uh, assumptions too quickly. Blend your research here together. Don't repeat or recap. Don't repeat or recap to control and come to your conclusions. Okay, so finally, create some sort of application at the end of the conclusion. I give you a really good idea here, check this out. Um, first of all, I think it's always good to have about a 150 word introduction and a 250 word conclusion. Now what you're gonna do is this. Tell your examiner what they or you should do the next time you're presented with new evidence. Say, this TOK essay taught me something valuable. I love TOK and here's what I can learn. Or, I'm gonna make this a new paragraph because I'm gonna make it bold because this is such a good idea. Use a real life anecdote from your own life. Bring it up in the introduction, reveal whether or not you believe something too quickly, and then explain what you should have done at the conclusion, or why what you did was good. Provide some sort of rele relevance to the title to score well. So what you can do is in the introduction say, when I was eight, I was presented with new knowledge. I learned that Santa Claus, oh yeah, Santa Claus will work. Yeah, my, my friend at the playground told me that Santa Claus wasn't real. I assumed that this new evidence was quick, what was true, and I assumed it quickly. And then go into your conclusion whether or not it was too quickly. And if you accepted it quickly, maybe you had good evidence. And so it was okay to assume too quickly that, or it was okay to assume quickly that the new evidence was the strongest because your friend had good evidence and you realized there's no way a fat man could go down a chimney. So that's just one example, but going full circle there will really help you out. With that said, if you want extra help, you can send me your essay, you can send me multiple drafts, we can do Zoom tutoring a lot. I just got a huge order for that today. I will help you out. Get a, get a hold of me at fiverr.com slash patfreakinjones, bit.ly slash TOK tutoring, and I hope that TOK sucks a little bit less today than it did earlier. Have a great one. Bye.